Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over the water to Copenhagen once again, the Tornbu district. And this is going to be my very first review from this brewery, but apparently they are one of the most widely exported Danish craft breweries. So we're going to go to Omega who are from Tornbu in Copenhagen and we're going to have a taste of their batch 1000. Now this, as it says on the tin, was the thousandth batch of beer that they brewed and it's supposed to be a really awesome IPA. It's got about seven or eight different types of hops in it and it's got a rating of 100 in the style and overall on rate beer and that site very rarely guides you wrongly so this should be a really pretty awesome beer and you can't really start off with a brewery better than that so really quite interested to try this one for you today. My first ever taste of a beer from Omega. But anyway, as is usual with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the video description below, the brewery website, the link to my future reviews from Omega and also the Facebook profile for the channel, please like it and also the untapped profile too and feel free to connect with me in whatever way you wish and to my Danish viewers please do recommend some other Danish beers for me to have a look at. But anyway, to tell you about Omega Brookhus, so Omega are based in, they were originally based in Kastrup in Copenhagen which is very close to the airport but they're now based in Tornby and they're probably one of the most widely exported Danish craft breweries and thus one of the most well known. So the brewery was established in 2007 by two young friends Morten Valentin Lundsback and also Jakob Storm and both of these guys before becoming professional brewers were quite avid home brewers and apparently in school the whole fascination with brewing started off when the pair were forced to do a chemistry and physics project together so they decided that they would write their paper about the fermentation process in beers and since that 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 early project they really were hooked on the idea of brewing beer. But after opening their first brewery in April in 2007, their beers quickly established themselves in Copenhagen and further afield, so soon their first brewery was far too small to meet the demand and in 2011 they upgraded to their new current facility in Tornby and apparently they have quite a humorous approach to brewing beer and basically this comes in the form of always putting really random artwork on the label and putting really crazy stories as well. And apparently it's caused them a bit of trouble with um, with exporting their beer to places like Iceland and Norway and Sweden where you have the monopolised, the government monopolised alcohol shops. But nonetheless, it hasn't stopped them really exporting their beer to further afield. So you can get these beers over in Australia and New Zealand and over in America, in South America and all of these sort of places. Omega Brukus are probably one of the most widely exported Danish craft beers after, of course, Mikeller and Toil. But they're not really, of course, Mikeller and Toil are gypsy brewers. They're not properly based in Denmark, if you like. But anyway, that's your kind of a brief story of Omega Brukus. I'm really looking forward to trying this beer. They've got quite a few different ranges of beers so there's always something for you to have a look at. Have a look at the brewery website in the description below if you're interested but in the regular range they've got the Omega Feld, the Brukus Blonde, Christens Haven Pale Ale, Drago or Brown, the Herr Fredriksen IPA, Rug Porter, Sund Bestout, uh, and the Wookie IPA as well on the regular range. They also have the Sinner series which are seven beers named after the seven deadly sins and supposed to be really quite nice actually. Hopefully I can review some of those and they've also got various specials and collaboration beers too. I've got another one or two collaboration beers from Omega that I will review for you in the coming months so do keep an eye open for those. But anyway, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer. This guy is a 6.5% IPA. As I told you it's rated at 1 100 on rate beer. It's got a malt base of Pilsner, Munich and Meloiden malts and it's hopped with Hercules which is a German hop. You don't come across that very often I've found but it's also hopped with Amarillo, Chinook, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic, Soriachi and Centennial hops and it also uses a US ale uh, yeast strain as well. And I'll just read out the commercial description of this one for you quickly because it is quite nice. So it says here, a great deal of beer has run through our fermentation tanks since Omega Brookhus opened in April 2007. There are more tanks now and more of you uh, of us and admittedly there is a bit more of each of us as well but that's just an indication that we are doing well and working hard at sampling our beer for you. Now we've brewed and sampled our way to batch 1000 and we want to celebrate that with a beer and a type that we know many of you love dearly, a juicy American inspired IPA dripping with hops. There are hops everywhere in batch number 1000. One kind during the, the, mas the mashing and the 
the mashing and the boil, two others in the whirlpool and, initial, and three more added to the first and second dry hopping. Thank you for supporting through all the years we spent in Tornbu's con concrete hell. We would not be here today if it wasn't for you. Many thanks, the Omega Brucus. So quite a nice little commercial description on that. So before we crack open, I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one. Quite simple, I'll just turn this light off quickly so you can see it. As you can see, really quite nicely presented actually. It's quite different from the other Amager beers you'll come across but this is the standard Amager symbol there and that is also on the bottle cap for this one as well. But as I said it comes in at 6.5%. This is a half litre bottle. I'm not sure if you're going to find this one again. You can see that description that I read for you there. It's in Danish on the side of the bottle but I think the ones that were exported had it in English as well. But it was on, I found that on the Rate right Beer website and I think maybe somebody's just translated it for you there. But anyway, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. This one should be a really awesome beer. So as you can see, a really nice, big, smoky opening on the beer there as we get it out. But yeah, I've seen a couple of the Amager beers when I've been in Brewdog and things like that back home in Scotland, but I've never actually gotten around to trying one. So this should be one of a really quite awesome beer review, I have to admit. I've been looking forward to this beer ever since I bought it. I thought I would save it for review number 550, which I have done, of course. But as you can see, just like you see, this beer has poured a really nice, kind of bright orangey amber colour. It looks really quite nice, actually. A half finger of a frothy white head there. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the bottom of the glass. No sign of sediment, and there's a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. It looks a really attractive beer and without even paying too much attention to the aroma, you can really smell all the different fruits coming off this one. They must have just blasted this beer with hops really, really quite good. And if I, and as I say as well, you, there is a level of transparency to it, but it is quite a hazy orangey amber colour, this one. So let's have a better look at the aroma. Yeah. A really nice blend of fruit in this one actually, as you would expect when it's an American inspired IPA. And it's got a whole host of hops in it, like I said, there's Hercules, Amarillo, Chinook, Centennial, Simcoe, Citra, Mosaic and Soriachi of course as well. So there's quite a lot of characteristics you know are going to be in this beer from the aroma. But as I always say, just take a bit of time and smell the beer before you actually drink it. So as you would expect with this one, very hop forward aroma. There's a big orangey citrus in there and it mixes quite well with the, uh, the tropical fruits in this beer too. But it's the Amarillo hop is the one that gives you a nice orangey citrus. And there's a bit of a kind of lemony character coming out of it as well. Not too prominent, but it is quite subtle. And that's from the Soriachi hop. But there's definite kind of grapefruit in there as well. That will come to you mainly from the Chinook hop, I think. And there's a lot. The Citra hop, wherever the Citra hop's used, you will get quite a lot of different, um, quite a lot of different tropical fruits coming out of it. And the Simcoe will give you a little bit as well. So from the Citra hop, you can definitely get a little bit of peaches, passion fruit, and some kind of uh, mango and apricots as well. The citra and the Simcoe hop are really the ones that give you the apricots and the passion fruits. The Simcoe, I think, is the one, like both of those will give you passion fruit and apricot, but the citra one is the one that will give you things like the mangoes, the peaches, maybe a little bit of lychees as well. And the citra hop as well will give you some papaya. And you can really smell that in there as well. I trained myself to smell out all these different fruits using fruit juices. It's actually a really good way, if you taste them and smell them, it's actually a really good way to train your uh, your palate and your nose to pick out all these different ingredients. But overall, I'd say it's quite, the fruits in this one, there's a lot of fruit in there, but the main components are definitely an orangey citrus. And I think the peaches and the passion fruits are coming out quite a bit. And you can also get a bit from the, the mangoes and the apricots. Out of all the things, all the other notes are a bit more subtle but those ones are the ones that are a wee bit more prominent. So really, oranges, good bit of grapefruit, some peaches and passion fruits, and you can also pick up a bit from the apricots and mangoes, but I think there's definitely a little bit of kind of papaya and lychees and some other things in there as well. Maybe a little bit of melon actually, which is a characteristic of the Hercules hop. But underneath that, you can get a good floral character as well, and that's the Amarillo, the Hercules, the Centennial, and the Mosaic. All of them will give you a little bit of that. And there is just a little bit of pine resin as well, but that's very, very mild. 
That's mainly, apparently that's the Hercules as well. And also I know the Simcoe and the Chinook will give you a little bit of that too. I actually had to look up the Hercules hop because I'd never really come across it very much. But it's a German hop variety apparently, becoming quite popular too. But it gives you a nice kind of floral and sort of piney and it can, apparently it can give you a little bit of a melon note as well. But yeah, there's a whole host of stuff going on in this beer. And there's a bit of earthy character too. You can just pick up a little bit of earthy uh, hop out of this one and it gives it a little bit of a kind of dusty nose if you like. And that's the mosaic. The mosaic out of these hops is the one that will give you just a little bit of earthy character. But there's a bit of a kind of light breadiness in there as well and some uh, a kind of light bready malt base and you can pick out a wee bit of caramel in there too but overall a very big kind of tropical and citrusy fruit loads of different of, of complex varieties to it as well like I said but there is a bit of floral aromatic character and a little bit of pine resin too a wee bit of earthiness but there's a nice um, sweet caramel malt base underneath that and a bit of breadiness as well so there's a whole host going on in the nose of this beer and when it is such a special beer just savour it as much as you can I've made this the smelling part a bit long but you know when it's a beer that you're only going to find once what the heck you know but without further ado then let's get stuck into this guy it smells beautiful really looking forward to it so this is the batch 1000 from Amager Brukhus in Tornbu in Copenhagen in Denmark Skald Now, that is beautiful. It really, it really doesn't disappoint. You know, I spent a lot of time smelling this beer and it just, it's really absolutely beautiful. It was worth the wait. It's got just the right balance. On first taste, it has just the right balance between being nice and bitter and nice and juicy, like a nice fruity, juicy character. It's absolutely beautifully done. One of the best IPAs I've ever tried, possibly even the best IPA, and that's just on one or two sips. That beer is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, beautifully done, but as you would expect, there's a lot of hoppy and fruity flavours coming out of this one. Huge and fruity beer. So, there's a definite orangey citrus there. You'll feel that behind the very front of your tongue there. There's a wee bit of a kind of lemony character backing up, but there's a nice juicy orange character at the start. Then that gives way to more of these kind of tropical fruits, and you've got a good bit of grapefruit pushing its way out on this. That kind of nice sour grapefruit flavour in there. That pushes its way out as you move into the aftertaste. But to me, this beer really starts off with the nice juicy citrusy fruits and that grapefruit just pushes its way out a bit later on. Hmm. Yeah, in those tropical notes, the, the grapefruit probably is quite prominent, but you've got the passion fruit starting to come out there a bit more in the aftertaste as well. And there's a definite peachy character. And at the start as well, once the citrus starts to fade, you get a little bit more of a juicy character from the, the the tropical fruits too and you can pick out a little bit of the mangoes and the apricots in there as well maybe even some kind of lychees and papaya in there but it's mainly you'll feel the the tropical fruits getting a bit more juicy and then they turn a bit more sour into the grapefruit and just in that little transition you'll get in the palate you can really pick up some of the more subtle notes like the mangoes and the, the apricots and things in there and a bit of the peaches as well but really the most prominent components of the tropical fruit flavour are probably those peaches, the nice passion fruits and a good bit of the grapefruit as well. There's a lot there's a lot of stuff going on in this beer so just let your whole palate adjust and pay attention to it because there's a lot of beautiful flavours in this beer. Mm. But yeah, really nicely done. In the middle of the palate where you're getting the more Malty characteristics of the beer. It is just blanketed with this nice white bready flavour in there, and then on top of that, you get a nice, slightly dark but really sweet caramel, uh, caramel sweetness character in there. It's really quite nicely done. I have to admit, it's the the, the balance in the flavour of this IPA is top notch. I mean, it's it's on rate beer. It's rated at one hundred, and quite rightfully so, in my opinion. Out of the five hundred and fifty beers I've reviewed for you, this one is right up there top five beer, perhaps the top IPA that I've reviewed for you on this channel. Really superb stuff. Mm. 
But in this beer as well, there's a quite a prominent floral hoppy character and it actually comes across as a bit spicy and that is probably the work of that Hercules hop. It, the, the floral aromatic characters are like nothing I've ever kind of experienced in the beer before so I, I'm, I'm quite tempted to attribute that to that German Hercules hop. Apparently it gives you a bit of a kind of peppery aromatic spice and you can definitely feel that around the edges of your palate. There's just this nice spicy floral aromatic character in there and I've had a lot of beers with uh, with the sort of Centennial and uh, and the Simcoe hops and Mosaic and things like that but the this aromatic character in this beer is quite a bit different and that's probably that Hercules hop that's in there. It works really quite nicely but you can also in the aftertaste you can feel this kind of dry quite resinous character as well and that's some of these pine resins coming out around the edge of the tongue there but at the very back corners of the palate too there's a little bit of earthy character quite smooth though and that's definitely from that nice mosaic hop I always like a little bit of mosaic in there it gives you a bit of a bit more of the grapefruit and it also gives you a nice smooth earthy character in the back of the palate mm. but yeah the flavour in this beer is really top notch like I say probably the best IPA I've reviewed for you on the channel here. If you do come across this beer, don't hesitate, just buy it. Seriously, it's such a good beer and it's a shame that this is only going to be a one-off beer. This is, it, when, when you find a beer this good, you really, when it's only a limited edition, it's, it's one of the kind of downsides of doing these beer reviews for you. It really is just a shame when you find a beer that's this good, but it is only going to be a one time in your lifetime that you're going to taste it, but it really is top notch. Yeah. But yeah, as you move into the aftertaste, that, that nice resinous and spicy aromatic character just stays there. And the tropical fruits, as I said, come out a bit more at the end. The citrusy sweetness is a bit more at the front. A nice orangey lemon citrus at the start, then the more kind of sour um, tropical fruit notes come out. Really, really beautiful beer, this one, I have to admit. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, it's definitely mid-bodied, got a smooth carbonation to it, but it's got quite a big oily mouthfeel, and that helps bring out a lot of the different fruit flavours that you're getting in this beer. It's got a good spicy bitter character. As I said, that Hercules hop is a really nice nice touch that they've added to this beer. So it's a little bit different and a good bit and quite quirky in that regard, I would say, but there's a nice spicy and bitter dry character to this beer. A lot of nice juicy fruity characteristics. It's really if you like your fruit juices and you want to get into beer, this is definitely one to go for, but really, really nice. And there's a good bit of caramel sweetness in there as well. It just balances the flavour quite well. And the, the earthy hop character at the back of the palate gives you a nice transition from the, the sweet caramel into the more dry and resinous hop parts of this beer. So overall, this is, you know, all you can say about this beer is that it is truly magnificent. One of the best IPAs I've ever come across. And I don't say that lightly. I've reviewed a lot of IPAs on the, ch on the channel. And this one um, probably is the best one that I've come across. It's the one that I've enjoyed most. And, you know, I would say if you come across this beer, you're very lucky because it is a limited edition. So definitely buy it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really cool to do my first one from Omega and it really didn't disappoint. Absolutely top class beer. So buy it up if you get the chance. But anyway, uh, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it. Check out the Omega Brewcoos. I'm going to be reviewing a few more of their beers really quite soon, I'm sure, because this, for my first beer review, this was truly outstanding stuff so I'm going to get stuck into those other Amager beers that I have and hopefully I can try the Seven Sinners series that would be really awesome but let me know your own thoughts on this beer always interesting to hear them please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff to my Danish viewers please let me please let me know some other Danish beers to review please like the Facebook page and add me as a friend on Untapped I hope to hear from you hope you've enjoyed this review and many more to come from Amager and from Denmark Slange just now